Hello everybody, my name is Nick Peralta of MMAOutsiders.com and MMA Discussion Admin and this is episode 5 of Puncher's Chance. The remainder of this year has been crazy and this week has only added to the madness that is 2016, so let's get right to it. Vitor Belfort retires, but doesn't retire? So this week started off pretty odd. Vitor Belfort put out this very interesting Instagram post that made it seem like he wanted to retire. When translated in English, the very end of that post read, uh, Thanks a lot to all my friends and advices, but I have decided to end this chapter of my life looking at the mirror and recognizing myself. Now, even before you read that part, Vitor's post overall was pretty perplexing. He spoke mostly about his faith before even getting to that note. But naturally, everybody figured Vitor was retiring, and many MMA media outlets, myself included, definitely ran with that story, thinking that was the case. However, once contacted by MMA Junkie, Vitor clarified on his words through Instagram, stating that he did not want to retire and was looking to get back into competition as soon as possible. So, uh, you know, who he fights next would be very interesting. He's lost his last three of his four fights to Weidman, Jacare, and Gegard Mousasi most recently. And so, you know, who he fights next, he's still a big, big draw. That's without a doubt. So who, the, whoever they put in front of him, I'm thinking maybe Uriah Hall, Rashad Evans, you never know. Uh, 185, he's still got plenty of fights. He's, there's still a lot of market value on him. So who he fights next would be very interesting. Let me know in the comments below who you think he should fight. Jose Aldo meets with Dana White and Sean Shelby. Now, again, I am all about this story because holy hell is it huge. Aldo met with Dana White and Sean Shelby this week, and out of that, many rumors started popping out, such as him being offered a new contract, offered more money, he was offered the crew super fight, none of which have been confirmed. But that's also kind of the thing, man. I know, has anything changed? Um, will Aldo return? Certainly seems like he may not now. Shortly after said meeting took place, uh, Aldo maintained that he was done fighting. So, But he did also say that there would be other meetings in the, pos in the foreseeable future. So, you know, this is an incredibly controversial story that I am very much going to be looking into the development of. I really think this is huge. Jose Aldo is one of the best fighters, one of the more incredible fighters of our time. And for him to say that he wants to walk away from the sport because of all the controversy sur surrounding the matchmaking that the UFC has been doing, sur surrounding the nature of, of Conor McGregor's title reign right now, uh, it's a very interesting story. George St. Pierre claims that he is no longer signed with the UFC. UFC refutes. So, whoa! So the Canadian superstar George St. Pierre went on to the MMA Hour, which is hosted by Ariel Hawani, this past Monday and stated that he was no longer signed with the UFC, according to his lawyer. St. Pierre states also that he entered negotiations this past February with Lorenzo Fertina, then owner of the UFC, to get back into the octagon. And when UFC 206 was scheduled for Toronto, that's when he knew he wanted to get back in there for that date, for that uh, event specifically, he took on the four month mandatory return testing policy for USADA in order to return and make it for that date. Now, negotiations were ongoing but did begin to pick up traction according to St. Pierre. However, the UFC would then be sold to WEIMG this summer, and that's where things got difficult. Now, communication was lost on the part of the new owners and George St. Pierre until finally they did answer back his request to progress negotiations to return back. To the octagon. Lo and behold, they actually refuted the negotiations altogether. St. Pierre would then say that his lawyer set a deadline for the UFC essentially to give him a fight. Now they offered him Robbie Lawler. However, Robbie Lawler, as we all know, is out for an extended period of time following that knockout loss just a couple months ago, if that, to Tyron Woodley. So of course with that bout not coming in and the UFC basically not giving him another fight after that, his contract was essentially terminated according to his lawyer. This apparently came as news to the UFC, who of course believe George St. Pierre is still signed with them and even went as far as to say they are currently looking for a next fight for the Canadian superstar. So now who knows? I mean, you know, there is the possibility that we see this settled in a courtroom, but at the same time on the other side of that coin, George St. Pierre now has more leeway, or more pull rather, in being able to get a contract that he's happy with moving forward if the UFC does indeed want him to fight. Dale Silva asked who would win a matchup between Anthony Rumble Johnson and Bellator light heavyweight champion Liam McGeary. Ooh, well, man, that's tough. You know, when I break down fights for MMAoutsiders.com, I, I typically uh, like looking at fight videos, I like looking at stats, I like looking at all that stuff. So, um, mind you, this is all off the top of my head. I think Johnson, you know, I, first of all, I believe he's the much larger man. Um, he's not taller, but he's larger, he's stronger. Uh, he fights on the inside well, great pressure, something he would need to execute very well against a guy like Lynn McGarry who has a long reach. 
And in the clinch, Rimble would have total control. And knowing that Liam is a very submission savvy type of fighter, I believe he would do his best to avoid the ground game with the Bellator light heavyweight champ. And, uh, you know, it's not like Liam's takedown ability is anything special. And we've seen Johnson able to fend off uh, takedowns very well. He's done, he's done that against uh, Phil Davis. And against Daniel Cormier, he was still able to defend quite a few takedowns. But with that all being said, I don't believe Liam would be able to take him down enough times to be able to implement his submission type of offense. Now, I know Liam McGarry has, of course, knocked out a few guys in Bellator, but uh, I don't believe he's ever fought or ever knocked out anybody with the striking pedigree of Anthony Rumble Johnson. So with that being said, and not being able to get him down to the ground uh, and not implement the type of offense that maybe Johnson may be susceptible to, I do have to favor Anthony Rumble Johnson in that matchup. If you don't think it's Rumble, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to keep the discussion going on that. Seth Mitchell asks, with the new management changing much within the company, do you see the UFC losing more talent to other organizations, or is this exactly what the UFC needs? So Seth is referring to the fact that the uh, WMEIMG, the new owners of the UFC, have been moving in and out employees lately, uh, specifically many uh, long-term members in the Canadian offices. Now, as far as talent, which Seth was specifying, uh, before the U even before the UFC was being sold, you know, fighters were already jumping ship and going over there. Big stars like Chael, Benson Henderson, Rory McDonald. There's a few more to add to that list. And now you have a bunch of other stars that are currently thinking about it. You got Mark Hunt saying, man, release me. You got Jose Aldo who doesn't even want to fight anymore. You got Khabib Nurmagomedov, who, of course, has his own gripes. The list is getting larger on this. And this is becoming a crazy, 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 crazy topic. Um, but, man, it, it is definitely making things exciting. And, wh and what better... For a business than competition. If Bellator can get to that level, then man, kudos to them. It would make the entire landscape of mixed martial arts very exciting. I mean, you could even defer to the George St. Pierre predicament. More and more fighters uh, are taking advantage of other promotions willing to pony up the dough in order to, to even come feasibly close to contending with Big Dog UFC, which in turn gen changes the social landscape uh, of mixed martial arts as well you know m unions are a much higher possibility um, as well as we could also have drastically changed the business model of which fighters are signed in this sport point being we got fighters from world series going to, to, to the ufc ufc going to bellator bellator going to world, world series of fighting and it's on and on and on and, and we're starting to see a lot of fighters looking to take advantage of those who are going to to pay them the most. It is why money fights are becoming such a big ordeal because a lot of fighters are starting to see just how screwed out of certain contracts or certain amount of dollars they're getting when they certainly could be getting more. Alright guys, episode 5 is done. If you enjoyed this episode, please give me a like, share, subscribe. If you're not already a fan of the MMA Discussion Facebook page, go check that out. If you're not already subscribed to my YouTube page, Puncher's Chance MMA Discussion, go get on that as well. I appreciate any and all comments. I love feedback. That's the most important thing I love hearing from you guys. I love being able to discuss the sport with you. And so keep those comments coming. I appreciate it very much. Don't forget Friday night, Bellator 162. It is going to be headlined by Alexander Slamenko taking on Kendall Grove. And uh, we'll also have Bobby Lashley on the card. Should be a very intriguing card. I'm very excited to see what happens because I'm loving all this craziness that Bellator is doing. At the same time, I hate it. I absolutely hate it because they're out of their minds. But at the same time, it sells. People watch it. They're crazy. But whatever they got to do to contend with the UFC. And to some extent, they're not too far behind. So I say to you guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time on the next video, I will see you here on Punch's Chance. Later.